Community Living Centers is a residential provider agency for developmentally disabled adults. We have 11 group homes and we have about 130 residents that we service. We help residents become more independent in their living. They may come to our agency and have very little basic living skills and they might start living in a group home. One of the things that we do is help our residents work on life skills. Some examples of that would be learning how to cook a meal, learning money skills, laundry skills. There's all kinds of skills that um, residents learn. CLC's goal is to make the residents feel love, to provide a family environment for them where they can grow and reach all of their potential. I like living at the Freen House because I like all the staff and they treat me the right way. They take us out or they help us if we need anything. I've been living in Freedom House for about five and a half years now. Um, we do fun things together. We go out places. I work out in the community for fun. I like doing puzzle books. I like reading. I work at OCC and I work with Laura Jean. I'm a dishwasher and the chefs are nice and the students are nice. Sometimes they help us. I like it. I work at Doubletree on Monday and Friday mornings and then on Tuesday and Wednesday nights I work at OCC doing dishes for the culinary arts. By the end of the day, working day on Tuesdays and Wednesday, I'm ready to hit the hay because I work very late, so I just come home, put on my PJs, and hop into bed and start snoring. When I was a little kid, they used to call me Teeny Weeny Laura Jeannie. But when I was eight, me and my sister were walking to the store and crossing the street, I got hit by a car and was unconscious in a coma for about 10 weeks. Had closed head injuries, they did a tracheotomy and they say I'm a miracle child because they all thought I had no hope of coming out of the coma. Erin and Laura Jean are great examples of what we want to achieve at CLC with our folks. They are independent, they have great social lives, they have the support of their families, and yet every day they're learning new things, they're becoming more independent, and our hope is that one day they're gonna move on out of that Freedom House and into their own apartments. There's a common perception that people have that our folks just live off the state. But in fact, they actually earn wages to pay for their leases, for their utilities, for their room and board. They also receive um, their social security. They pay taxes like everybody else does, and they work very hard to be able to afford the things that they want. Some of the biggest challenges that CLC faces as an organization is financial support. Over the last three years, the funding that we have received from the state was decreased by about $180,000 a year. We are hoping that one day we will get that back, but as of today, we continue to operate in a 6% deficit. CLC was founded by a phenomenal woman named Mary Wagner. She was a special ed teacher and she also had a son that was developmentally disabled. She saw a lot of her students and a lot of the children that she worked with uh, growing and showing potential, but then once they were leaving school, the options for them to realize that potential were very limited. Many individuals with developmental disability were institutionalized, marginalized, they were basically warehoused, put into rooms where they had to share beds in rooms with at least 20 other people. Food was limited. It was basically a fight to survive. She knew that a loving family setting with a peer group where they had potential to reach opportunities and pursue their dreams and their goals and be integrated with their community was going to be a major turning point in how people with disabilities were treated by society and, and how they were able to kind of follow their own life arc as close to normal as possible.
In the 1960s, minorities of all kinds were starting to demand their civil rights. The Civil Rights Act originally included rights for people with developmental and physical disabilities. It wasn't going to get passed with those things included. There were enough leaders who would oppose it in that Civil Rights Act that that part was eliminated. Mary was a pioneer in many ways, but mainly because she had so many obstacles to overcome when she first decided to open these group homes. When she incorporated CLC, it was with the cultural standard of reaching potential with loving support around each individual. She was successful in opening the first group home in October of 1969, and over the following four years grew to serving 76 residents in three or four homes. Back in the 60s, people did not want group homes as their neighbors. They didn't want to have our loving residents as their neighbors because they thought that it would lower their property value, that people wouldn't want to buy their homes near them. They were afraid one of our residents might attack a local school child or that they would not pay their taxes, that they wouldn't take care of their lawns, that the house would be dirty. There were all these misconceptions that that Mary had to tackle. She would have to go to city council meetings and try to educate angry neighbors of why it would be okay to have our folks living next to them. Her hope was that in time, these people would see that they're just loving members of the community like everybody else. Many of the neighbors who were first against our folks living next to them are now some of our most fierce protectors of our residents. Mary's son, who is, I think, one of the ultimate success stories, he worked for the United States Postal Service for over 30 years. He retired, got a great pension. He was married long term. He used to drive and he's still a member of the community. He, he is a member of the Knights of Columbus. He ushers at St. Gerald's Church every week, once, twice a week. Um, he, like I said, is one of the ultimate success stories. Aaron came to our organization about 11 years ago, and he came to us because his family was familiar with community living centers and wanted him to have the experience of living with his peers. They knew early on that Aaron was very social and needed to be as independent as possible. For Aaron, um, knowing that his family is one of his big priorities and the fact that Freedom House is so close to them that has made Aaron's living arrangement truly really successful for him. Aaron loves Special Olympics and he's quite the medalist. He does skiing, he's done basketball, he's done bowling, um, but he's very, very proud to continue participating with them and then very, very proud to show off his uh, medals. I compete in a lot of Special Olympics. I did baseball, basketball, skiing, and I got this in gold and slalom. This one is bronze, and this one is the gold. I like Special Olympics because I like meeting a lot of friends and I can hang out with more people. There was over 4,000 athletes up there this past year when we were at Traverse City. Laura Jean has been with Community Living Centers for six years now. She loves arts and crafts. She loves going bowling. She loves going out to eat. She loves going to the movies. She loves to be the jokester in the group. She loves that attention and she loves making people laugh. One day I would love to find me a, a male friend who we could do things with, go out places with long black hair, maybe lots of money. He'll let me sleep in while he cleans the house up. I'll be living in luxury. That's my in my dreams though. Or would you call that a nightmare? <laughs> like the saying I told you, women's faults are many, men have only two, everything they say and everything they do. That's a PSA. Huh? That's a PSA. <laughs> <laughs> One of the
the things that everyone needs to know is that our residents are just like everybody else. They have the desire to have relationships with people. That could be a boyfriend-girlfriend, it could be a staff person just growing close to somebody who's been giving them care for years and years. A lot of the residents are very, very attached to their home managers. They have very rich social lives. They are out in the community all the time. They are engaging with each other. We strongly encourage family engagement. I think they have a blast. They've been bowling every Saturday for as long as I can remember and I've been with the CLC 21 years. At the end of the bowling season, they look forward to the bowling banquet where every one of them gets an award and then they proudly display it in their room. I think as an organization, CLC has many goals still ahead of us. I would like to see us remain as strong as we are today continue to provide the highest quality services possible, be even more integrated and have more partnerships with our community partners. Thanks to our donors and our community partners, 87% of those donations go right back into providing quality services for our residents. It helps them maintain their homes, it helps create opportunities for them that they wouldn't otherwise have. Because the funding that we receive through Medicaid dollars is not adequate enough to cover all of the needs that we have as an organization, we are constantly working on fundraising ideas and requesting donations and support from our families and from our community partners. I don't know if as an organization we would be able to survive as well as we do without the support of our local community. We have a great relationship with vendors in the community, with community partners. They support us both with the services that they provide to us, as well as many of them come to our fundraising events. They donate out of their own pockets and out of their organization's pockets. And without those donations, it would be much more challenging for us to continue the legacy that CLC has maintained for 50 years.